What's happening, y'all? First clickbaity video. First clickbaity video. I'm excited kinda about it because I haven't even said, I haven't said anything about forward-facing sonar and the impact that it's had on the industry. I haven't got to really say anything about it. I've maybe posted about it like really rarely. I wanted to see what the majority opinion was first off. I wanted to learn people's insights. I think that nowadays we're so quick to inject our opinion and think that it matters and that people should give a, that's the problem, right? Is that maybe we need to take time to listen to what other people have to say. And that's what I've done. I have taken months and months and months just listening and watching and seeing you know, what everybody's opinions are on this issue or on this matter. I don't think it's an issue. I think it's a great thing. I think that one major problem is that the negativity part. I think that it's, in a way, it both hurt and it both hurts and helps the industry. And I'll kind of want to get into that just a little bit. I'm going to go up to my office so we can lay down some facts. I'm going to hop on the Mac and browse around a little bit so I can show you guys a little bit um, what exactly. Uh oh. Okay, let's just look at a couple things. So when we go to Google search, which I'll go do right now, let's just go to Google search and type in forward facing sonar band. And that will be like the start of this. So when we type that in, Google yields. Now we typed in forward facing sonar band in tournament bass fishing, yield 672,000 results. When we type it in on YouTube, it doesn't actually give us a number. There's a couple guys that come up. These are gonna be all your typical videos that we've seen <laughs> that definitely picked up on the viral aspect of things. There's a, several things to take into consideration when we talk about this, but the first thing is we should address is forward-facing sonar hurting our sport? And if anything, it's not. It's if anything, when we look at the numbers and the data that's provided, I think that that's something that, that everybody needs to take into consideration before making these crazy ass opinions. So first things first, A, we gotta look at the age of the people that are the biggest proponents for not having it and look at the age demographic for the biggest proponents of having it. That's gonna be a major factor for when I'm looking at this. And what I see is a lot of guys that don't like it are my age and older. And for you guys that don't know, I'm 37. When I look at this, I think of it as a stylistic thing. At the same time too, I do wanna take a look at each individual angler that is lobbying against it and look at how they're performing in the scope of those of the tournaments that they're fishing. And a lot of them, what I've come to find is a lot of their performances went way down. Okay, now one thing is for certain, when you have a group of guys that are used to winning consistently and then all of a sudden they're not winning, they gotta figure out how they're losing. And a lot of times they're gonna correlate it to whatever that person that won, that winning technique, they're gonna correlate it to that, which only makes sense, right? When, when I look at like, three, four different things in forward-facing sonar. The first one is gonna be tournament fishing. The second one is gonna be fish harvesting. The third one is gonna be conservation. And conservation kind of ties in with the harvesting of fish. One thing that's on a whole different scope of argument, I don't know, we're not gonna really deep dive into it today, but that's panfish. How does forward-facing sonar affect pan fishing. That's what I'm mostly concerned about, but that'll be a different video for a different time. How does forward-facing sonar affect tournament fishing? I think that the positives are pretty obvious, man. You're getting younger people into the sport, which that's what takes the sport to grow. I think that when you get on this specific deal where you you have someone like Kevin Van Dam, Kevin Van Dam's the, god, the goddamn goat. That dude catches them. What made him KVD? It was catching them and winning tournaments. When it comes to bass fishing, it's the most losing sport that you could ever compete in. Like, it's kind of like NASCAR in a way. You don't win a ton. And so when you get someone like Kevin Van Dam that's bringing home trophy after trophy, you gotta ask yourself, what makes him so good? 
it was intangibles. Like you just really couldn't put your finger on it. He has a natural God-given ability to catch fish. Some people have that and some people don't. That's just the bottom line. Some people have a natural ability to catch fish and some people just plain don't have that ability. When we talk about guys that win like Kevin Van Dam, he obviously possesses that intangible ability to, or intangible or untangible. Hmm. Anyways though, he has that intangible ability to catch fish and people can't quite put their finger on it, which kind of correlates with like Randy Blockett's big, his big push against forward facing sonar is that there's supposed to be some type of mystery behind bass fishing. It requires an intuition forward facing sonar is taking away from the sport, that intuition. In a sense, that's hard to debate that, right? Like it is, it's kind of hard to debate what he's saying in that. I think that we forget about that. That is something that is a generational thing, I think. I think that the people that really appreciate that ability for the intuition and they really appreciate the, the intangibles that make an angler great, I think that that is like my age group and higher. That's really, <laughs> It, it really is like an age thing, I think. One thing that I know for certain, not to get too far off topic, but one thing that I know for certain is like for myself, I kind of gravitate towards the stuff that's from my timeline of happiness. So, and that's different than what the younger kids have. When we look at the younger group of guys that entered the Elite Series this last year, man, what a great group of guys, you know, uh, I can say one thing right now, very uber talented group of kids. Man, despite their age, despite how they're catching these bass, they're catching them. One thing that aligns with what everybody's saying, a lot of these guys are definitely utilizing their forward facing and it could be a main or a big reason why they're knocking down these trophies or not why they're finishing so high up in the standings. Now, one thing's for certain, I think that when you get a group of guys that have been doing one thing a specific way for a long time and they have to change and adapt and you got this other group of guys, younger guys, that are coming into the sport that haven't really cemented what they're doing yet and they're already so good at this forward facing sonar thing, I think that that's frustrating for the, for the veterans that are out there, for the guys that have been in the sport for a really long time. I think that's extremely frustrating for them. Have you ever felt like, like you're running to a destination, but that destination keeps on getting further and further and further back, no matter how fast or how hard you run? That's kind of what we're looking at here. If you start, like you take these younger kids, if you start at a skill level right here, and you never knew any different. You never knew any different for this forward facing sonar thing. And your skill level over time just evolves and gets up to here. You know, so this is for the younger guys. For the older guys, what if your skill level's right here? But now this new piece of equipment is introduced and now your skill level starts to shrink when only you're using that equipment, right? That skill level starts to shrink. Now you're learning it. You are actively learning something new, whereas to your younger guys, they're already up here because it's all they know, right? These guys over here, these guys, this is all they know and their skill level without hardly knowing anything and just barely getting into the sport is still at a higher level than your guys that were up here. Now they are taking something that they used to be very extremely efficient at and they are going and they're degrading down to here. And that is what we're seeing in the Elite Series now. The guys that are adapting, you know, you got guys in the Elite Series that are adapting really well. I haven't looked at the standings either way. I don't like the idea of banning things. We need to take and really truly think about where we're at with technology as far as the internet goes, as far as social media goes, as far as algorithms are pushed. That's another thing that I wanted to highlight. I know I'm going like all over the place and I'm really rambling pretty hard, but I have ADHD really bad. So anyways though, algorithms is something that's really, 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 really a problem. So, well, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd say it's a problem. Anyways though, algorithms is what perpetuates this argument into full oblivion. So when you see a training video and I, I would say probably the biggest, one of the biggest names that's against this would be Randy Blockett. And one of the biggest names that's for it would be Ben Milliken. These guys, when I pull up, when I Google that, 
forward facing sonar banned on YouTube. When I just type it in on YouTube, these are the first names that come up. Now, this could be due to the algorithm in the videos that I select, but I'm gonna show you guys really quick, first person, what it actually shows up. So, we got Matt Steffen, Rick Klon, Randy Block, that Randy Block, this one is a good one. If you guys haven't seen this one, this is a really good one. My opinion on this one, is that Milliken cuts Randy off a ton and doesn't really let him finish and both make some really good points. I would say that in that video specifically, Randy brings up some great points as far as the research data that has been fulfilled or like around this topic. So one thing's for certain, the research done in this video or the research that Milliken references in this video is like a survey type research. Do remember that Ben Milliken is, I believe he was like a wildlife biologist before he came into the sport. That's what his major was. And so he is biased to the collection process of environmental data that's taken. That's something to know for sure. All right, so next we got G-Man, Kyle Welcher, you know, we got Matt, Matt Stark fishing. Of course, another Mercer video, Bass Talk Live, Jacob Wheeler. So, I mean, there's a ton of good content out there on this stuff, but the problem, geez. <laughs> oh, it's suggested for you. I was like, how did these ones get in there? <laughs> and here we go again. You know, just tons of them. But one thing, guys, that I will say is if we look at this guy right here, look at his subscription base, man. He's killing it. Oh, shoot. We only have views in that one. Let's look at Randy's subscription base quick. What is his thing? Intuitive angling. Guys, he has, this man has 122,000 or 123,000 subscribers, which I have 183. I mean, we gotta, we gotta really look at how the algorithms are really staging this to be and what do the creators like the youtube guys and guys like randy blockett don't let their noble pursuit like randy don't let his noble pursuit trick you in the idea of thinking that hey man this is a very trending topic everybody's talking about it this does help him monetarily as far as his youtube channel goes i don't blame the guy I'm not like mad at him for it. I think that he needs to do whatever. Like I'm, I'm actually like happy for this guy because he figured out something that I can't figure out personally, which is he uses his, his freaking Samsung Galaxy sitting in his workshop and makes a video, uh, a, a 10 minute video of him just rambling, talking about stuff. And he makes pretty good money doing it. I wish I could figure that out. So I am jealous of this guy, but he, he does have something to gain every time you guys click this video. If you click on his video and then click on seven more that back his opinion, these will fill, these will fill your YouTube feed on your home screen every single time. It, it will do that and it'll force feed you. That's what the algorithm does. And I think that everybody understands that, but in the heat of the moment, when we're debating these topics, we kind of forget the fact that everybody that's putting out content around this subject, absolutely 150% does have something to gain by you clicking on the video. Everybody feels so strongly about this, but the one thing that we're not really focusing on a lot too is what happened when companies started introducing the other technology. I think that that's the, another thing that doesn't get talked about enough. Side imaging got introduced Man, how many guys were probably head, like super pissed about that because all of their secret waypoints that they found with their 2D and down imaging and stuff like that, like how upset were they? But there wasn't a YouTube at the time. There wasn't a Randy Blockett out there voicing his opinion with an algorithm to catch it and just to push it into everybody's lives every single day. And I think that that's a great argument to have. I don't, I don't wanna talk about what the technology actually does. But I would say how impactful was it was the technology. I mean, GPS and side imaging were incredibly impactful to the sport. They were impactful for me. It helped me so much as an angler. We didn't have the internet back then to tell us that everybody was mad about it. And that's my main argument about that. 
Going back to what we were talking about with that other video that we found on YouTube where Milliken debates Randy Blockett, that video got force fed. It got a lot of views too. It was pretty it was pretty decent. Like, I'm not gonna lie. It was pretty decent. That video really did get both people's opinions out there. And I really think that both of them have very good arguments for forward facing sonar and for against forward facing sonar. But here is the best part. The sport is growing. Younger kids are getting more involved with the sport. I remember back in the day, high school fishing teams were pretty empty. Now it is a major thing. I don't know, like I'm from Brainerd, Minnesota. I don't know how many kids signed up for high school fishing this year, but every single year it's more and more and more and more. Fishing did become the cool thing to do. When I was younger, very few, like I didn't know, like for example, when I was in high school, didn't know or hear a lot of kids ever talk about bass fishing. That could be from the idiots that I used to hang out with, but I did not hear a lot of people talking about it. Now that's all you hear kids talk about is bass fishing, bass fishing, bass fishing. You even have kids that were in, you know, athletic sports like basketball, football, baseball, participating in fishing too. I personally know a kid down in the Twin Cities that was a pretty good baseball player, but an excellent fisherman. Dropped out of baseball for fishing, which, you know, that could be good and bad, I guess. My opinion on forward facing sonar is that it is great for the sport. It's growing the sport, it's expanding the sport, and there's an easy solution to it all. And that is form two leagues, form a, form a league that that you can use it and form a league that you can't use it. And then that's that, it's a done deal. One thing that guys that are fishing the higher like elite level circuits goes is this. You, you can't, you cannot refer to yourself as an elite angler if you refuse to adapt to an environment. That's part of what makes you elite in my opinion. That's part of what makes you the best and that's what separates you from me. Just A, the natural God given ability to be able to catch fish, but B, the adapting. You can adapt to scenarios and circumstances much better than the average angler can. That's what makes you guys at the top of the game. I would just quit chin about it and I would probably get to know the technique. And yes, you're gonna struggle. Like I said before, if you were up here and now you go down here, but these kids just keep on moving the needle, you better get on it. You better start moving it. And if you can't, then again, the next class of anglers is gonna come in. And this is gonna, this is natural. Like it's supposed to happen, I think. I think that trying to stop it is just, it is an arbitrary move to the people that are losing that want to keep winning that can't. I guess that's my, my first clickbait video on forward facing sonar. Hope you guys liked it. It was a good time. If you guys like this video, subscribe to my channel and also drop a comment below. Like, are you for it or against it? That's like a really good, that's a really good way to start it. So drop a comment. Are you forward are you, or for forward facing sonar staying in the tournament scene or are you not for it? Drop a comment and tell me why. All right, I'm out of here. Time to go crappie fishing. See you guys.